Mr. President, uh, we all saw the news uh, that uh, yet to be confirmed that uh, uh, General Gaddafi is dead. Uh, this is a, uh, a victory uh, for our men and women in uniform, for the United States, for the administration, but most importantly for the people of Libya. Senator McCain, Senator Graham, Senator Rubio and I had the privilege 20 days ago of uh, traveling to Tripoli. I was quite surprised at what I saw. Uh, being in uh, other war zones, uh, Tripoli did not appear to be one of them. The rebels took the uh, capital largely intact. Only the Qaddafi compound uh, was blown away. Anti-Qaddafi graffiti, obviously spontaneous everywhere. And some of the most popular people in the city were United States citizens. While many people in Libya did not fully know the position of uh, Senator McCain, they knew he was an American leader. And throughout our visit, they came up to thank him uh, for the aircraft that they saw overhead, that they felt equalized the battle uh, between them and their government, between the professional army of Muammar Gaddafi and the people of Miserata, the people of Tripoli, the people uh, of Benghazi. We have the makings of a very pro-United States ally here. Millions of Libyans right now are very thankful for the United States. Uh, they feel that the aircraft overhead that equalized this battle were almost all American. In reality, much of those aircraft were uh, British and French from our NATO allies. Uh, but because of that pro-American feeling, the new government there is likely to be uh, overwhelmingly pro-American. Uh, as we look uh, to a now secure post-Qaddafi environment, we have to make several points. First, when we were there, leaders were obviously afraid that as long as he lived, Gaddafi could make a comeback. That now no longer looks possible at all. Secondly, to head off Islamicists who may try to form a party, uh, the Prime Minister there, Jibril, wanted to call early elections. We should help him call early elections because right now the rebel TNC government is overwhelmingly popular and would be elected. Next, we have to unify military authority with the new rebel government. Uh, we were briefed that there are 28 separate militias in Tripoli. Uh, we should unify military command uh, under them uh, to make sure that any sectarian violence uh, does not break out uh, with the victory uh, that has come at hand. Libya is a unique country which does not need foreign assistance from the United States. We've seized 34 billion of their dollars over $100 billion is seized account worldwide. They need assistance. They need medical backup, training for their army, support for their elections, but they can pay for it all. One thing they asked us that we should provide is a hospital ship. USNS Comfort should be allowed to go to Libya uh, to care for those who were wounded in this battle. We were told 25,000 citizens of Libya died in this revolution. 60,000 were wounded. The United States should help care for them, and the Libyan government should uh, reimburse uh, us uh, for that effort. Uh, when we look to the future, we also have a couple of key challenges. We were briefed that uh, Gaddafi's chemical weapons stockpile was secure, and I think it is, but we need to keep it that way. We were also briefed that the uh, arsenals of Libya uh, were looted, including thousands of handheld surface-to-air missiles. It should be a top priority of the United States to buy or gain custody of those missiles again before they become a threat to civil aircraft around the world. In the end, as I said, this is a victory for the administration, for the men and women of the U.S. military, but especially the people of Libya. And if we take the steps that I just outlined, security for the chemical weapons uh, uh, arsenal, uh, recovery of the surface-to-air missiles, support for early elections, and medical care with the provision of a U.S. hospital ship, I think we will lock in uh, the winning of a new, very pro-U.S. ally in the Middle East. And with that, Mr. President, I yield back time. Mr. President.